Hi everyone, very sorry I couldn't be there in person. Thank you so much to Alfredo and Jonathan for arranging things so that I could speak to you this way. Uh, as you can see from the title card that I think is uh, somewhere around my chin or to the right or left, who knows. Uh, my talk today is trying to cover Tailwind for WordPress developers, why WordPress developers might want to use it. And before getting into that, I want to give you a bit of context. Thinking about the number of lines of CSS I've been writing per year since I started making websites. I know we all lie in bed at night and think about these things. And for me, the graph starts back in 1998 when I first was being paid to make websites for people and there was no CSS. So it's a glorious flat line. And then, as you can see, things start to curve up a bit. Around, once you hit around the, the 2000 mark, things started to get to the point where it was safe to use them. And it just escalated. By the mid 2000s, writing a lot of lines of CSS, not doing much to organize them, just throwing them into a single file a lot of the time. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a different time than now. Things did change. We had a distinct drop in the number of lines, but we add a new dashed line representing the number of lines actually being sent to visitors of websites I created. The solid line is the number of lines I typed by hand. And as you, eh, some of you may have guessed, SAS. I love SAS, used it for more than a decade on every project I did, and it really helped organize my CSS and made me happier writing CSS. And SAS functions certainly changed things, made it easier to do all kinds of things that were hard to do when it was all done by hand. And that began, SAS was probably the reason I started adding build processes to all of my projects. And I never really looked back from that. That really helped me do a lot more interesting work, I thought, and take on bigger projects. And so all that, I think, start, started with SAS. Then the big change, 2018. Huge drop in the amount of lines of CSS I'm writing by hand, minor drop in the amount being sent to site visitors. How do we account for that? Tailwind. So, how, what is it about Tailwind that gives us that huge drop in the amount that I'm writing by hand and a significant drop for visitors changing how much CSS is being sent over the wire, reducing the bandwidth being consumed by sites? Let's double back to that after we discuss what Tailwind CSS is, because that will give you a bit more of a sense in terms of how the how that chart is possible. I like to go straight to the source. Uh, if you go to the Tailwind CSS website, they describe themselves with this sentence, rapidly build modern websites without ever leaving your HTML. What does that look like in practice? This is also taken from their website, so no, no, uh, no credit to me for this one. Uh, so as you can see, there are already a number of Tailwind classes on your screen. So in the code on the right, you can see they, they're just the classes attached that describe how the figure to the left is laid out. You can see, for example, it has a light gray background. It has rounded corners. So that's the uh, background gray dash 100, the rounded dash XL, the image below, it's width and height are defined using Tailwind classes. And then when you get into the text, they've done some minor things. They've made the quote itself large and they have uh, added a bit of padding and, uh, and spacing in between the two sections. But let's see what happens when we really get going here. So as more classes are added, you can see things getting fleshed out. So the image is now a circle. We're making the quote semi-bold. We're going to add a bit of weight to the type below. We'll make the name blue and we will gray, just lighten down the, the credit. Now from there, we're going to start making things responsive and we're still doing everything just by adding new classes. So they're doing everything at the medium size. Uh, Tailwind defines some sizes for you. So the medium size is roughly a tablet and portrait. And so we've added a number of classes. Just doing that, you've created these two distinct responsive versions of this quote card without leaving this HTML at any point, and you've done it in minutes without jumping around into different files, without doing things that might affect other things in your project. That's the concise summary of what Tailwind CSS can do for you. 
So let's talk a bit about the properties of Tailwind CSS that let it do this for us. So first off, and the thing that if you're familiar with utility classes, you've noticed already, it is utility class based. And what is a utility class? So if we look at some C- some HTML that was written without Tailwind CSS in mind, you'll see classes like these, classes that describe the thing that is being created. So the HTML is creating the notification block above. Uh, it has various wrappers that are needed to attach styles to the items below. And then as you go through, you can see that in each context, you're adding a new name. So you have to think about these names. You have to think about uh, what the wrappers represent and are doing. And then you would then write the CSS for this. Obviously, if you're using something like uh, SAS, you would be writing, it would be organized in a different way. But fundamentally, you are you are naming the blocks that you're creating, and then you're uh, adding the CSS to attach to those. The same, blo- the the exact same element above. This is what it would look like created with utility classes. So instead of creating custom CSS for each of these design elements, you're instead just adding them directly in the HTML one after another in any particular order, and so you aren't writing any CSS for this, when you add something like p-6 or mx-auto, it will write the corresponding CSS for you and attach it to your project. So in your in your style.css file in a, in a WordPress theme, uh, the presence of those classes in your project causes the CSS to be added to that file. You don't have to write it yourself whatsoever. And that has a bunch of benefits uh, that we'll get into. But the way to think about it is that each place that you use one of these utility classes, it only needs to be defined in the CSS one time. So it may seem as though you will end up with more CSS in the end, but that just isn't the case. That's sort of the power of utility classes. You write them directly in the HTML, they end up creating one corresponding uh, CSS block and then that can be used throughout your project. So there's a big savings there, both in terms of time to to write the code and then in terms of how much is sent to your visitors. A big benefit with Tailwind CSS, so some people may recognize the concept of utility classes from lots of other CSS frameworks. If you think about Bootstrap, it is using utility classes. Some of them are exactly the same or very familiar. But a big difference with Tailwind is that it is totally design agnostic. So when you start out, and we're going to see this once I get to a demo, it is very raw. It's not dictating anything in terms of what your site should look like. It really expects that you are bringing your own design system and your own design, and it makes it possible to build absolutely anything. You don't have, you don't end up in a position where you start out with your site already looking like something. You really start from the ground level and can build up your site from there, which is very valuable if you're building client websites based on a design that is provided to you. And finally, it is optimized for production in a very deep and thorough manner. So everything about it is really building towards this idea of sending as little CSS as possible to your visitors in as prompt a manner as possible. So it takes less time for you to create the CSS, and then once it's ready to be bundled up and deployed, it is creating the smallest file possible. And that ends up, the the utility classes themselves end up creating a situation where you just end up with less CSS. It ends up being easier to keep your CSS organized in a way that prevents duplication and prevents you from sending CSS to visitors they don't necessarily need. So in my experience, the amount of CSS that I was sending to site visitors just dropped. It dropped a a fairly significant amount from this, more than other optimizations I could have managed. Switching to something like Tailwind, though, it's not really about the technical side of it. It's about how Tailwind can make your life better. And so let's look and with those ideas in mind, what is it about the properties of Tailwind that let you do things like work faster? So I have found that I am able to complete projects much faster than before when using Tailwind as my CSS framework. And that comes from the the, la- the elimination of almost all context switching. So you don't have to be jumping back from one file to another. You can stay in one place, just keep layering on utility classes until things look the way you want them to look. 
and you don't have to worry about things like specificity, uh, nesting issues, things that come up in SaaS that start to get quite complex once you're building components that are used in multiple ways. And, and sometimes that comes down to realizing late in the project, hey, this component needs to be in multiple places. And suddenly you're, you're fighting with restructuring it throughout everywhere it's referenced in CSS. That's something that just goes away. It goes away when you're using utility classes in this manner. And you don't have to think about naming things anymore. So you have all these components. Who cares what the wrapper should be called? You don't have to decide. It's just you drop in the utility classes that say how it looks. You will be done in less time, and you will not have to worry about wrangling these nested uh, blocks of CSS and trying to make sure that the specificity you've created doesn't end up overriding a global global property that you wanted to be in place. There are all sorts of things that that you you just are no longer things you have to think about. You can build absolutely anything. At the, it makes it so simple to create a design system that you can use throughout your project and to maintain it in a way that just will keep working for you from start to finish without having to uh, refactor a lot of things and without having to, it's the bootstrap example again, where you don't have to fight against presets that end up making it, you know, that you're, you're already baked into a grid or form styles or anything like that. It's all, it all comes to you. Uh, unstyled in a way that's very straightforward to build up to the design that you're creating for your client. And just as an example, I recently had a project come to me where uh, it wanted to reference uh, chemistry. And so the entire site was hexagons, hexagons everywhere. And that ended up being no problem at all. I, I just, I feel like it, there's this idea that, that tailwind has a look, but it's it's really not about starting out a given way. I think there are component systems that can send you looking like other tailwind sites, but you start at you start at zero and you can go in any direction you want. There's no look for a tailwind site out of the box and you can create absolutely anything uh, with with less effort than I've found with any other CSS framework. And finally, if like if you're like me and you have a lot of projects on the go or you have clients coming back to you for changes, it makes it so much easier to go from one to another. You don't have to dive back into a project you haven't touched in a week or a month and start going through the, the SAS files and thinking, how did I structure things this time? Or digging through just a single SAS file and saying, all right, where does, can I change this and not override how things look in any other places? And it gets, as a project gets bigger and bigger, that can get harder and harder. This just eliminates that issue altogether. And then as you have more projects that you're leaving for months because they've been deployed, they're live, your clients are happy, but then they come back and they just want to change one minor thing. Those minor changes are so much easier. It's hard to even quantify how much time I've saved just by being able to jump into something add a utility class, recompile the CSS, deploy it, and move on to something else. It's it's so much easier and faster than anything I've done before in terms of those sorts of changes. If you're adding a new component, especially, that's something that can you would I would worry in the past about about things I add clashing with things that are there already. That worry is just gone. So how do we bring Tailwind to WordPress? Because there isn't a built-in system for this. It's not something Tailwind itself doesn't have uh, a place you go that explains how to bring it to WordPress. And WordPress itself is evolving so much right now that that really it, it takes some thought to think what is the best approach. So I think that hybrid themes are really the way to go. If you haven't, uh, if you haven't been immersed in the world of the different na the names of the different types of themes we can build now. Hybrid themes are PHP based. So the, the three things we're going to talk about right now are classic themes, hybrid themes, and block themes. So like classic themes, hybrid themes are PHP based. And if you've been building themes for years, they'll be very familiar to you. But they fully embrace the block editor for content. 
that's the big difference between classic themes where it's it's sort of they might but they don't necessarily hybrid themes will have a theme.json file uh, that will define things for the block editor they will make full use of the block editor throughout that's that's the best definition of that and i think this is the best way forward for the foreseeable future in terms of integrating tailwind into wordpress could you use it with a classic theme you could ah uh, why would you? I, I, I feel like I the block editor is truly great and it is where WordPress is going. And I, I feel like to not get on board with it now, I understand if you have old projects, you may still be embracing the classic editor. I have old projects for clients that that still use it. But if you're building something new, I would suggest using a hybrid theme, but there is no reason you couldn't do it with a classic theme. And what about block themes? I think if you really put your mind to it, it could be done, but I just wouldn't suggest that block themes right now, especially are very much evolving and they have very strong opinions about how CSS should be integrated into them and are generating blocks of CSS throughout. There are all sorts of things going on there that you would be fighting against. I think Again, as block themes evolve, I think we may get to a point where it makes sense to integrate Tailwind. I wouldn't suggest it now, but if you do it, I would love to hear about it. So what does it actually look like to build a theme with Tailwind? Let's, let's build one and see it in practice. I, a, last year, wrote an article for CSS Tricks before, before the big digital ocean thing happened uh, called Adding Tailwind CSS to New and Existing WordPress Themes. If you wanted to go the route of really starting from scratch, adding it to either a new theme or one that you're already working on, I recommend my own article. I'm not sure if anyone else has written anything along these lines, but I know that I covered it. Uh, so that's that's if you wanted to do that, you could read this article and it, it talks about it a bit. But if you are not uh, interested in starting from scratch in the sense of figuring out how to integrate Tailwind and to run into a bunch of gotchas and, and potential issues, I have also created a uh, theme generator. So inspired by underscores or underscore S, which many of you may remember, uh, it is called underscore TW. The TW is for Tailwind. It lets you generate a theme built for Tailwind right out of the box. And uh, so if you click that button, the generate button, you would end up on this page, your download would begin, and you would have a theme. And so that is what I've done. Uh, once you have that theme, so you're going to unzip it, you're going to move it into your uh, WP content slash themes folder. And then once you've loaded it in your uh, code editor of choice, assuming it has a little terminal, these are the commands that you need to run. And this is this is it. This is all you need to do to get things moving with Tailwind. So let's see what that looks like. So I have loaded I already copied everything over that happened in the background. I'm running npm install and now I'll run npm run watch. Once you've run this command from then on, it is going to be watching your entire project, checking for any utility classes you've added, and as you add them, it will add them to your style.css file. Simple as that. So let's, uh, we talk, I talked a bit about design systems. So I'm, this is going to be extremely basic, but just to give you a sense of how this looks, if we wanted to add our project colors and project fonts, where would we do that? So Tailwind comes with a configuration file. So this is tailwind.config.js. I'm going to scroll down to the theme area. I'm going to add a new block for colors. I have to spell it the American way, even though my slide went the Canadian, which was, uh, you know, got to gotta keep it accurate in Vancouver. So I'm adding magenta first. I am then going to add pink. I'm using the same colors as my title card. And uh, so let me just figure this one out. So I'm adding pink. And that is it. So now, now a range of utility classes are automatically created for those two colors. So I can use it for backgrounds, for borders, for any for text, anything I want. I now have magenta and pink. All the corresponding utility classes are automatically created. So let's take a look just to give you a sense of what it looks like in practice. Let's do a really quick job of laying out a page header. This is what things look like 
with no work done at all on the theme we just installed. So it, it does center, you can see it centers the, uh, the text. By the way, this text is just a blog post I wrote a long time ago. Uh, it will, yeah, so I just paste that in. It will center that text, but everything else is pretty, pretty unadorned. It's very basic. I and mean, to call this middle text adorned would be a stretch, but it's, it's centered and it's not the full width of the browser. So I guess that's something. So let's see what we would do. First, uh, yeah, so let's, let's start up here in the header. I'm going to switch back over to my code editor. You can see I'm in the header.content file. Uh, so all we have to do, let's start adding Tailwind classes. Let's make the background magenta and let's put some white text on top of it. So we'll make all the, the header text, we'll just make it white. Hit save, switch back over, refresh. Already off to a pretty good start. Now let's see if we can move that menu over to the right. We'll just switch on display flex and uh, we'll justify between, then we'll get far left, far right for those elements. Uh, things are looking a bit tight to the edges, so let's add a bit of padding. And, you know, we're already in much better shape. But what can we do about this menu area? So the easy part is that we will take this button. So this button would be used to show the menu on uh, mobile devices. We're not going to worry too much about getting into the uh, responsive side today, so I'm just going to hide it. So display hidden, simple as that. Pop back over, it is gone. And now, what shall we do about this menu? So here's where things get a little bit different. If we look in our PHP file, so we have a standard WP nav menu block. We could, there are all sorts of things we could, there are a number of ways we could address this. Uh, we could create, go all out and create a nav walker that would apply the CSS classes to the different elements. Uh, there are ways we could stretch it. We could, we could sneak some classes into this block here straight in, in, the, uh, in the function itself. But instead of doing that, I am going to show you an example of using uh, a Tailwind. The, a common question when you're first looking into Tailwind is how do you, if I can't control the classes being created by my CMS or whatever system I'm on or, or a JavaScript widget, anything like that, if I can't control the class names, can I still apply Tailwind classes to them? And the answer is yes. So let's take a look at this. We're still, we want to change this menu. We just want to make it left and right too, uh, side by side as well. We already know the ID is primary menu. So I am just going to jump over to a file called components.css. So it's meant to be custom styles that, that you add to your, your Tailwind theme. So we already know that primary menu is the ID. So all we're going to do is it's, it, so that's going to be the, the unordered list element. So we're just going to make it flex, put a gap in between the two items, and that should be enough. There you go. So now they've popped back up. We could, we could do a lot more elaborate things. We could highlight the active element. We could go much further than that, but that gives you a sense of we can apply styles uh, in that way. But let's, uh, let's, let's make things a bit more obvious in terms of hierarchy between our friends, our, our logo, our friendly logo on the left and our menu on the right. So there we've up the text size and then, uh, but they're not lined up anymore. So I'm just going to change it. So they share the same baseline. So, oh, well, let's bold it too. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to change, we're going to set things on the same baseline. So do items end. And now if we refresh, we have a nice bold logo. And if you look, we've got a perfect line there. They're lined up. Great. Uh, so let's, let's call it a day on that header, but what shall we do about this footer at the bottom? This is our out of the box. We've got some widgets. We've got some things going on down here. Let's create a super, super basic footer. What will that look like? So I am going to delete most of this. I just want to make a little note at the bottom saying, saying we made this site and we're happy about it. So I'm just going to delete all of this. Uh, this is going to be very similar to what you saw at the top, but just to give you a sense of how quickly you can start moving things around and styling things, I'm going to keep this wrapper uh, that that had the privately powered by block, but I'm just going to type it out to make it very clear what's happening. So 
So now let's add a paragraph. All right, looking good, looking good. Now let's see how things are appearing over here. Yeah, you know. Uh, so still very unadorned. Let's 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 use the other pink we fired up, and so we'll set background pink instead of background magenta. And we'll do the same padding. And let's center this text. I think that'll look a bit better. And refresh again. And there we go. Nothing special, but you can very, very quickly start adding classes, moving things around. Uh, and so this just gives you a sense of, obviously, if you had more down there, you'd be throwing flexes around and adding gutters and all those fun things, but that just gives you a sense of how quickly it can happen. So with our header and footer covered, what can we do about the content that we're getting from the block editor? That is our next key spot. So when you think about post content, often this is coming from clients or this is something that you, you don't have full control over and Tailwind has a solution for that too. So there is a, an official Tailwind plugin called Tailwind Typography, uh, and it creates typographic defaults. Uh, I'm reading straight off, straight off what it says, typographic defaults for HTML you don't control, and what better description is there for the things that people put into the block editor, the classic editor, all the editors. And what do, so let's, let's activate that plugin and take a look at how things appear right after that. So again, so I'm just scrolling through to give you a sense. There's a hairline in here, there's some headings, but it all just looks like text. Back in our config file, I'm just going to, uh, so this is the line for Tailwind Typography. I'm just going to uncomment it, save, and here we go. This, this, is, just, uh, this is just a starting point, but this is to show you what you get out of the box. Uh, just because it will bother me for them not to be there. I'm going to add some margin to the top and bottom. So we've swung over to the content-single.php file. Uh, we can add utility classes straight into the post class function. So I'm just going to add my means margin on the top and bottom. 12 is a bit more than we had for the padding four and the header and footer. And so now it's, you know, it's a generous space, but let's see, what can we do about the style of the link and the headers? So I've swung over to my functions.php file. Uh, there's a constant here called uh, underscore TW typography classes. And this lets you control project wide the classes that are applied to your the content coming from the block editor. So we can actually add Tailwind utility classes, but specific to different elements of our typography block. So if I refresh now, we're going to get magenta links and, head and headings. Uh, but I think we could probably still do a bit more to distinguish between our heading levels. Actually, let's see how this looks in the, uh, in the admin first. So you can see inside the block editor itself, it has also updated. So it also now gets the, the magenta headings we created, the magenta links. That all happens behind the scenes without us having to do anything in particular. And just to give you a sense of how things can be changed in even a more specific level, let's uh, take the H3 and we'll just make it black. So an easy thing to notice. So we'll swing back over, we refresh in here and our second heading, our second H3, our third level heading, but our second heading in the article is now black. And let's swing over to this, we'll refresh here. And it's black here as well. So we're just adding, there's just one place where we can make all these decisions. So, so we could style the text size in the paragraphs, the space between paragraphs. I have used it to make uh, indented paragraphs with no space in between at all. You can style block quotes, all these things. You can apply uh, utility classes to them and they will be applied anywhere they're coming from the block editor and they will be reflected in the block editor as well. So it gives you this great way to uh, to customize that part of the, the project without having to worry about that being a separate thing that you need to go, go and write custom CSS for. And finally, I had promised, so that, that I hope gives you a good sense of what it looks like to bring Tailwind to themes. Um, my suggested approach being the hybrid theme, but the same thing would work in a classic theme. And then, but what does it look like in a WordPress plugin? So, 
I haven't seen a ton of plugins that are using Tailwind, but there is one big one that does. Yoast SEO started using uh, Tailwind for its settings area in the back end. I, I'm almost certain this is powered by React. It's it's the settings area you get from, from the Yoast menu. Not all of the, if you go to general, some of the other ones, you're not getting this, this advanced settings area. I think they're sort of rolling it out to more parts as they go. But right now, if you go to Yoast SEO settings, you will see this page. And so if you have something like this in your plugin, it could make, it could definitely make sense to use Tailwind. And the only gotcha is that you should namespace your classes. And what does that look like? So because the class names chosen by Tailwind are pretty generic, if you start using things like hidden, uh, things like you know, background red, you, you might conflict with another plugin or with the theme that is being used on the site that your plugin has been installed on. So instead of doing that, the trick is to add a namespace ahead of them. So there is a Tailwind feature that lets you add a prefix. In Yoast SEO's case, they have chosen YST. So they knocked out those vowels and made it three characters long. So if you start looking here, you can see a mix. So you see ones you may recognize. So YST-P-4 towards the center, we were using P-4. So it just prefixes it with YST. This makes sure that they don't have to worry about conflicting with anyone else's styles. And in terms of doing that in Tailwind, in that config file that we looked at before, it really is just as simple as adding a key for prefix and saying what your prefix is, and then all of your generated uh, CSS will have that prefix. And then you just have to type with the prefix when you're adding your classes. But let's step back even more. Why, why do any of this? Why switch to Tailwind when you have a system that works? For me, if you look at this little chart, it seems like a big life moment for me in 2018 was discovering Tailwind, and it was, but other big things did happen in 2018. I became a dad, and I had a lot less time, and it was no accident that I was searching somewhat desperately for ways to do more work in less time and to not have to worry about working at night, not have to worry about working on weekends and to make the same amount of money, hopefully. So that was really the goal. And it worked. I, I, I really, you know, we're already all using WordPress. I don't have to talk you into that. Or I assume the vast majority of people in the room are already using WordPress. So I don't have to talk you into that, but. I will try to talk you into Tailwind because I feel like of the things I have used in my career, the things that have made the biggest difference in terms of my quality of life have been dedicating myself fully to using WordPress when I stopped trying to create my own CMSs or use other CMSs and switching to using Tailwind for all my client projects. Those are the two biggest things in terms of improving my quality of life. And to me, it, this is not a story about having a kid. This is a story about time. We could all use a lot more time. And I really feel like this is a way to free yourself up. There are things you wish you were doing. If you use Tailwind, you could probably do more of them because if you, once you really get into it, I, I just feel like you can do more projects in less time. And I haven't talked about this much up to now, but I just became a lot happier doing them. I feel like the, what felt like drudgery of going back and forth from template files and then moving into CSS and writing nested CSS and naming the things that I just built and going back and forth from those files, it just felt like a slog. And now I feel like when I work on new projects, I go into it knowing that I'm going to enjoy every part of the project. I'm going to enjoy the difficult parts about building a site with WordPress. I'm going to enjoy building the front end for it, knowing that it just feels fun. It feels like everything is at your fingertips and you can build things quickly. You can build things and have exactly what you have in mind just be translated to the screen in a way that feels really, it feels wonderful. It feels like magic almost, just how quickly you can, you can get things going. That is my pitch. I am sorry I couldn't see your faces as I gave it to you. And uh, thank you so much. 
see. Greg, can you hear me? I can, yeah. Okay, that's good. Can you see them? <laughs> So there's somewhat of a camera there. Um, cool. Well, we will. Yeah, we'll throw it out to them. Uh, anyone who's got questions, raise your hand. Connor's got a mic. Uh, yeah. I see him running somewhere. Let me know if you can hear them. Hello. Can you hear me? Hello. All right, awesome. I'm just looking through uh, the GitHub uh, repository for the um, uh, underscore uh, TW. Um, I thought WordPress needed a um, index.php and style.css for a theme, but it seems like you don't have it in the root. You have it in like a theme directory. How do you manage to do that? So that's not how I recommend deploying the introduction, but the my understanding of the, the legacy reasons for that working is that uh, I think Automatic itself wants to set up a, a, a master repository that has a huge number of themes in it. So if you look at the Automatic slash themes repository, you can see that it has dozens of themes. If you drop that into your themes folder, it will pick up all of them, even though they're not in the root, they're one level down. So. Well, I, I reviewed the WordPress code to see that that's what's happening. And what it is doing is it, it will look at every subfolder for, uh, for style.css. That said, I don't really recommend it going that way. It's more a, it's, it's sort of cheap so that people can develop it more easily, so that people can, I guess, start really quickly. And then because there's the, the workflow in place to bundle the creative team and to, to send that, to, to, to deploy that in any way you think is appropriate, that, that one that is deployed to a production site doesn't use this kind of hack, it's sort of development hack in my, in my eyes. But it, it is what Automatic is using for their master theme repository as well. And again, reviewing uh, WordPress 4, there doesn't seem to be any plan to remove it or change it. It's just a legacy way of allowing multiple themes to one folder. And so we just have one subfolder, but it works out the same way. All right, thanks. No Anyone else? Questions? Questions? Anybody have any more questions? Cool. All right. I think we're good. Well, thanks for oh, dropping we, on there. It looks Greg. like we might have one here. Oh, we do. We awesome. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. thanks for putting all of this together. Uh, one. If, if my understanding was right, one of the differences between the way this works and the way something like Bootstrap works is, is it feels like the NPM build process is only including the expansions of the utility classes that you actually use in your, in your theme. Is that correct? That is exactly right. Uh, so the original way that, that Kevin worked back when it was launched it would create a CSS file and purge everything that you didn't use using purge CSS. Uh, more recently, they they retooled their workflow, so now it actually only add, it, it will uh, it, it will go through, look at everything you've used, and then add them one at a time. They they just have so much work in optimizing their setup that they can do that. Yeah, I don't know if you saw it in the screenshot, but it's the build time on my computer is in the ballpark of 150 milliseconds, and just going through every file on your team, finding every single Tailwind class, and then setting those out. And the reason they changed their approach here is now you can do arbitrary uh, arbitrary utility classes. So you can create your own that aren't part of the spec built in. So you, you can put things in square brackets. So if they don't have the exact color or, or size they're looking for built into your config, you can just use them one time. So that's something they retooled how they had that set up to allow any an infinite number of potential utility classes as opposed to a set uh, set library of them that they then project. So that's a bit of the history of that. Uh, I actually had a question myself, if that's okay. Um, I was wondering, what would you say is probably the biggest drawback of using Tailwind uh, in WordPress or generally that you might not have touched on before? And terms of drawbacks specific to WordPress, I mean, your, your workflow does have to be tailored a little bit. If you're not used to having a, a build process, if you're not, if that's something you're not comfortable with, uh, then, then you simply can't use it. 
the nice thing about setting up the build process is you can use it for other things as well. So, so the build process and the underscores W theme I created, it also handles your JavaScript, so the whole build process built in there is useful. But again, if you're not comfortable with that kind of approach, then it wouldn't work out for you. Uh, if you are working on a team, then you're you're kind of signing, if you commit to using Tailwind, you're kind of signing the rest of the team up to learn Tailwind as well, which isn't necessarily something that everyone is comfortable with at all times. Um, those are kind of, those are the biggest drawbacks that I see. Them. You, you have to change your workflow, and if other people are working on it, they have to change their workflow as well. But if you compare it to some other systems, once you learn the basics of, of what the user classes look like, the tailwind computation is just so good that it's pretty quick to pick up and be able to modify things. And the time savings in terms of not having to look through a project and try to understand how the components uh, are, how the how specificity can clash between components and how things are set up that way, you can end up uh, spending so much time there and you only learn one project, whereas if you learn tailwind once, to apply like everything you ever do. So they are drawbacks. There is a there is a, a curve up, but it's not that steep curve, and I think it's worth it. But it, nonetheless, I think it is not a drawback. If you're if ever you're forcing someone to learn something, it's 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 you have to think about that. Cool. Thank you. Uh, looks like you've got some more in the back. Hey, hello. Um, by the way, thank you for your team generator. I think it's it's brilliant, and uh, it's uh, I'm gonna definitely use it. Um, one question I had is regarding like custom themes you do for customers, because you talk about hybrid team, and so do you, what's your approach for like let's say for pages for your customers when you you build something for for them to maybe interact with the block editor? Um, so do you do you usually go more kind of for specific pages like art code? Let's say your own page. Are you gonna art code that and use all your, your Tailwind classes and your loops in your theme or are you going to let them, you're going to build in with the block editor and then kind of try to override these classes with your Tailwind uh, method? It really depends on the client and the design and the budget, but I will I'll describe two approaches. So sometimes you can look at a home page and see it and say, Nothing about this is like any other page on the site. It, it does make sense for me to simply um, create a, a template for this and basically hard code it in different things they can edit or something like advanced custom deals. That's one option. But generally, I'll try to do as much as possible in the block editor. With Tailwind, it's not that I'm giving them, my clients will never learn Tailwind utility class names. They never have directly influence them or use them. But I'll try to set the block editor with custom components to be able to create the different designs they need. And that's something where you can use, you can create a, a custom block, you can you can use Tailwind to style that block, uh, you can do the block with the advanced custom fields if you're not comfortable doing it with straight JavaScript, or you can do a true a true custom block using using the JavaScript tools that were custom by that as well. Both ways can be done with Okay, last question. In terms of like uh, using uh, like uh, JavaScript for like let's say your menus or your mobile menu, do you uh, do you like uh, using Alpine JS? I'm just wondering if you or you have other recommendation for like uh, quick CSS, sure. quick quick JavaScript. What specific one you're asking about? Uh, if you experience using Alpine JS, Alpine JS that. Uh, yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, okay. I didn't want to get into it too much. I feel like it's in the same way, so I just worked it out using the generator. When it launched, it included Alpine.js. Oh, okay, good. But I felt like there were enough people who weren't interested in having, and also having a JavaScript uh, library dictation as part of it, so I, I brought that. But it's, you know, it's a 30 second install if you want to add it. And that's one of the first things I do when I set up my own projects from the generator is I add Alpine up JS. Uh, yeah, I strongly feel like the combination of Alpine and Tailwind is, is wonderful and it's what I use in all my projects for sure. All right, thank you so much. I think we had one more question there, yeah.
Hi, thank you so much for the great presentation. It was really helpful. Uh, I just have one question. I wonder if there is an easy way to kind of load the CSS that is used for each page only for that page. I mean, for the WordPress website, uh, when it is on each page, not to load the whole CSS of the website. So one of the big benefits of Tailwind is because you're using the same utility classes throughout the site, it ends up making a, a site-wide CSS file that's really concise. And you end up both, you get a lot of benefit out of having that one CSS file loaded the first time they load any page to your site, and then never having to load another one again. Because the file size is, is just so small that it, it will, so long as your visitor, excuse me, as long as your visitors are visiting more than one page, you'll find that it will just make future page loads so fast and it won't make the first page load meaningfully slower that I always I suggest having one CSS file that applies to the whole site is that ends up being I think a, a better a better situation for site visitors. If you did want to split it up, um, there is in fact a there's a there's a WordPress plugin. I, I the name is HP, but so it is designed to skip the build process part and let you use tailwind classes and that's kind of its approach so if each time you save the page it is trying to create a css file that applies just to that page but there are drawbacks of that approach because it's doing that with header and footer as well so if you make changes to your header and mm -hmm. footer it invalidates your your css to the entire site and then you have to figure out a way to, to get rid of all of them and start again so there are there in my opinion, the cost of that method is it, it, more brittle uh, to just be doing on a page-by-page -page basis with this approach. That's something that the that you that block needs to do something similar to that and it works very well. But if you're going to use Tailwind, I think you get more benefit out of having that single that single uh, CSS file. Right. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Th thanks, Greg. We're going to get uh, move on to our next person. Super appreciate you doing this. Uh, everyone, round of applause for Greg. He can hear it now. Uh, and if anyone has uh, lingering questions. Yeah, thanks, Greg. If anyone has lingering questions, uh, if you tweet or Instagram or Facebook or whatever at WCYVR, we can pass those questions along to Greg and he can respond to you that way as well. So uh, thanks again. Have a good day, Greg. Feel better soon. Thank you so much. Take care.